Hey there, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, here with Cadence. And today we're gonna to talk about creating one of my favorite types of soft light. Just a big kind of scattery light that goes everywhere. Kind of the cloudy day, but the little extra oomph. And for that I use, did I already say my favorite? One of my favorite things, this is gonna be a favorite video, which is a silk. You know, a lot of us will grab a silk. <laughs> a lot of us will grab a soft box right away, which is a good idea, but silks are such great ways of shaping and controlling the light because they're generally, for the size anyways, they're gonna be easier to move around and they'll be cheaper, but also because you can kind of manipulate the light inside of it a lot easier. Like by moving the, the light source back and forth, we can change how punchy or soft the light is. It also allows the light to scatter in places. It's just a really cool tool to use and you've probably seen me use it in a bunch of videos. Anyways, let me get into position and we'll talk about it. All right, so you can see I have the silk in position. It's relatively low because I want to create a bit of a flatter light. I can also make it higher and tip it down if we want like more of a midday sun. Here we're going for kind of end of day or morning kind of feel. It's going to come right in behind here and you see I have my light here. What we're going to do, and again this is what I was talking about the silk. I'm going to, I'll turn the modeling light on for you so you can see. We can take our light and we can move it into position wherever we need to get as much or as little light on the silk as we like. Now, of course, my camera's gonna be right here, so I'm actually gonna back this up a little bit so you probably won't see it in the frame anymore, but what's nice about this space, because it's so white, is we're gonna get a lot of bounce in here as well. So this is gonna create a very big source that's gonna fill the whole room. So let me get that set up and we'll get to it. All right, so you might notice that the lights are turned off here, at least the light that was lighting us. That's because I don't want it to affect my shot. I am using flash so I could overpower it, but it doesn't really make sense for me to be shooting at like F16 to get rid of the ambient light when I can just turn it off. So I am using TTL to at least to get my base exposure. I'm at 5.6, 200th of a second, ISO 100. I'm gonna shoot without the flash first. I'm here in capture one, because what I wanna do is, oh yeah, <laughs> I wanna get a super dark exposure, right? A black frame as I normally call it. But you can see with thing, when you have things like, uh, uh, sequence, when you have things like sequins, <laughs> you will notice that it is almost impossible to 100% get rid of the ambient light, because they will just pick it up and reflect it like crazy. So that's good for me. I'm not that worried about it. I think we're gonna be fine. Now I'm gonna come in with my flash and we're gonna take a shot. I'm at 50 millimeters, because we're gonna get a decently wide shot. And let's see what TTL gives us for an exposure. And we'll adjust from there. Okay, so because of the sequin shirt, the TTL was completely tricked. I knew that was gonna happen, <laughs> right? So when this happens, don't be alarmed. Now, what you could do is switch your TTL to like spot meter, which is some, what some people do in spot meter on the face, but I don't like using spot meter. So what I'm gonna do instead is jump over to my adjustments and I'm going to look at my exposure. Now, this is gonna probably blow out areas I don't want it to, but we're gonna bring the exposure up until we get the exposure on her face that we want. Okay, so that's about a stop and a half. So the trick here now, I mean, I could use exposure compensation, but really the simplest thing to do is switch it to manual, raise the power of my flash by a stop and a half, and take another shot and see what we get. There we go. So here you can see this light is completely soft. And one of the reasons why I, ch I chose this lighting set for this outfit was because we really get the light reflecting off the sequins. And again, nothing's really blown out here. When you're shooting something that's sequins, you want to see the texture, you want to see the punch. Now this might be a tiny bit too dark for my taste still, and that will sometimes happen when you do this. So we'll just go in there and adjust the light again. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna bring it up about a third of a stop. There we go. And now we can see that we've got nice, even, beautiful light across the face, the dress or the skirt as it would be, the shirt, everything looks nice, the background's lit. This is a nice, simple, kind of cloudy day at the end of the day or the morning light, right? It's got a nice, even, flat look. If you're looking to light something really flat and evenly, like a group, older people, anything like that, or something that's particularly reflective, like sequins, this is a great lighting option. So let's shoot a few like this. Okay, hold on, here we go. Good. Now I did mention that you could make this more extreme or more of an extreme angle. So let me just show you how we would do that. I mean, it's as simple as loosening the silk, flattening it out a bit, 
And again, because I have a white studio, we're still gonna get a lot of bounce, but this will actually create a little bit more contrast if we want it. But when we do that, we have to also adjust this light. So I'm gonna tilt it down. Put the Molly light on. That should be good. I'm basically shooting it kind of in front of her, if you will. We, we, we'll just do an exposure here, but I'm probably gonna have to adjust. No, actually that's good. And we can see, kill the modeling light here. Although you get to see it when the modeling light's on. <laughs> and we can see here the difference. Here we have really flat. Let me find one where the face is the same. We can see the difference. Here we have basically a really flat light, which is gonna be really gentle for anything we're doing. Here we can see it's a bit more contrasty and a little punchier. So depending on the look you're going for, you also notice this light on the left is almost shadowless, if you will. This one we can see a bit of shadow down here. So kind of depends on what you like. Let's shoot a few like this. It's subtle, but subtlety is where the money is, as we say. I don't know who we are, I just said that, as I say. No, seriously though, it is these subtle things that will make your work stand out. Knowing how to control the light exactly the way that you want it. All right, so there you go. Really nice, simple light with a silk. You could obviously also do this using the sun or any kind of constant light source. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, so I will. I don't know if you can see it, but make sure you put a sandbag if you're gonna be projecting something like this out over. It is pretty soft, but so you don't want the thing falling over and wrecking your set. Thanks again, Cadence. I'll put her links in the description below if you want to follow her. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell and do all that goodness. I'll put links to all the gear we're using in the description as well. And I'll talk to you soon.